Photoshop is a really powerful tool for creating new images from old. So if you think about one of the things about creativity is doing a mashup. So taking two ideas that have never existed together before, putting them together and creating something new. So what I'm going to do is show you something I can do with layers in Photoshop to create new feelings from old images. So what I'm going to do here is make a new um, page and actually I'm going to change that. I'm going to open up a image. So open and go to downloads. And in downloads we have a woman from Dior. So that's a Dior dress, it's an advert. And if you know anything about Dior, you can know this is recognizably Dior. Let's get this um, looking right so the view fit on screen. So actually we are now looking right. Okay, so what I want to do is edit this to give a different feel. Now one of the trends for spring, sorry, autumn, winter, um, 16, 17, is elemental. So how would, how could we make a visual that can inspire a designer for the elemental trend, if Dior was doing elemental? How can we think about this? So let's just um, do some tricks here. Let's take this and duplicate this background. Um, just because I like to keep one of the images at the back so I can play this as much as I like and then revert back to the original one. So don't have to do this, but I quite like it. So here we have the image. So I want to really mess with this image. I want to play with the curves. Now curves are sort of the highlights and shadows. You can, a great trick to do is just this S curve. Um, it doesn't always create fantastic images, but it does make the contrast incredibly high. And, you know, it's just one of the things you can do. There's, there's no reason why you couldn't just play with it and try and get a happy mistake. I mean, that looks like kind of washed out vintage. Anyhow, I want this high contrast S-curve. So, we can turn it off and see what's changed. And the reason I did this is I want to turn her dress from a black pool into a white space and that means it's going to be more likely to pick up imagery as we'll see in a second. Um, so adjustments, invert. And by inverting I'm making a negative just like with camera back in the old days. So now her dress is a great um, canvas to work on whereas before it wasn't. So what can we do with this? Let's add some texture. So I'm going to go file place back into my downloads and I've got some cracked earth. Right, and I'm going to just make this absolutely massive. So what I'm doing here, obviously I've covered up the original um, and I can't see anything, but I can use this, I can take the essence of this image and use it as a texture. And the way you do that is with these blend commands. Now, I know what these different commands do, but when you're learning, the best way to do this is just play with them. Um, so what does dissolve look like? Not very much. What does darken look like? Ah, that's interesting. We've now got that white canvas has picked up the image exactly, so we're seeing through, and the dark parts, which is the background, is giving a colour overlay, so that's kind of interesting. I'm just going to go through, and we can... Hey, and here's a different thing together. We've now got texture in there, in different ways. And the way I think about this is I know how, what my theme is meant to feel like. You know, I, I know how the trend feels to me. So I'm thinking, do any of these sum up the way I feel when I look at the trend? I'm just kind of playing with them. And they all look and they all feel different. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Exclusion. That's kind of cool. Divide. Okay. Hue. Hmm. It's not really got much going on there. Saturation. That's kind of cool, but not really the same thing. Color. That's kind of cool, but again, not really what I want. And luminosity. It's not much there. So I think actually what we had here, darken, that was the best one. But it is very extreme. So. I wonder what we could do to this, maybe um, we could do this 
play with this. Now, these are smart objects. I don't personally like them when I'm playing around, so I'll duplicate them, select both, right click, merge. There's no reason for you to do this particularly. You can work great in other ways. So let's just do one more thing. What happens if we invert that? Ah, this gets really interesting. So we've got both images are inverted. We can go through again. Do these do anything? They do. I mean, it's just really, that's kind of cool. It's a bit much though. And again, what I'm doing here is I'm playing. I'm going through these blends. I'm seeing which ones work best for me and sum up the way I feel about um, the trend. So I'm going to go for Darken because that captures lots of things, but I think it's a bit much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll back the transparency. Um, and here I'm going to play the transparency because this is where you start blending all the layers together. Actually, I'm going to keep that high. I'm going to keep this around well, 80, about 90%. So it's just rolling back a bit. But the colours don't really say the right thing to me. I'm I'm not getting the I'm getting the outline of the Dior dress, which is saying Dior, and the imagery of her, which is saying Dior. I'm getting the textures of the correct earth, which is saying elemental, but I'm not getting a colour that's not really there. So add a new layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, add a colour. Now, if you go on WGSN, you have different colour palettes. So they'll say that um, the autumn, winter, 16, 17 colour range for Elemental, one of them is this range of colours. Now, I could do that and extract them and do bits. I'm just going to pick one at random because this is just an example. But, you know, you, if you go to this area top right here, you can pull down and you can select a whole load of different um, colour palettes. So we have metallic coatings. Okay, just go for it. Um, we have uh, pastels and neons, which are very popular at the moment, of solid colours. I'm going to go for just solid coated at the moment. Just have a look. Um, yes, now these, these are colour palettes you do have available. Swatches as a whole other thing are so useful, but we'll get into that another day. So anyway, I want to get an element of colour. So I'm going to select my little... When you, when you roll your mouse over the, the colour swatches, it changes to a pet, so it means that you're selecting that colour. And if you look at the left here, you'll see that the foreground colour changes to whichever you selected. So blue means blue, and pink makes pink. Anyhow, um, I think that brown is a very elemental colour. So with this layer one selected, edit, fill, and you get pop up, which lets you do different things. Foreground colour means it's the one you selected. Click OK. Once again, we got a whole um, load of colour, which is not very useful. And if we just said colour, now we've coloured it in with that. If I was to change this, edit, fill, well, let's select a different colour. Let's go for a sort of reddish colour, which is still quite elemental. Edit, fill, foreground. Because the blending has already been selected, you keep that. So here we have a little bit scary, actually, image. And to show you where we've got to, make a folder and just move everything into it and turn the folder off. We started with this woman and we ended with that. And you can go, hmm, this might have gone a bit too far. Let's just take her again, copy, move her to the top. And what happens if we start blending her? Ah, by taking the original image over the top and saying lighten, another blending option, we're mixing this rather sort of Halloween-esque image with the original and getting a sort of composite of the two. It's starting to get interesting. And we can play with other bits, so screen, color dodge, overlay, which is not really doing much difference for that. Um, difference, that's interesting. That's very vibrant, but Elemental's not as vibrant as that. Um, 
but then we can we can just keep going and keep playing. So we can check another layer on. So selecting this cream, edit, fill, foreground, OK, and change this to color, and roll this back maybe a little bit. So yeah, um, I think right now we're going to stop because I've created something which I think actually is quite good. Um, moving back, moving um, this back into here, it's all in one folder. One the one looking left because I've got menus popping up over there for Photoshop. So you can see that I've taken this image, standard Shun as a Dior dress, the standard existing item, and created a new artifact which does in some sense communicate the essence of Elemental in a very vibrant, very graphic, very attacking way, which is relevant to digital printing. Now, nobody's suggesting that this is a design. You're not going to go and make this dress. But if a designer saw this, they'd go, okay, how can I get inspiration from this image to create new designs, which is a big part of the mood board. You're conveying thoughts, you're conveying feelings. And, you know, these textures here, there's no reason why you can't take textures from the actual trend. So this is a really short lesson in how to create um, very interesting visuals from existing media.